Welcome to Google Summer of Code 2021. It's the 3rd of June. This is the Git Credentials Binding Project. Uh, thanks. So Harshit, I had username password binding prototype on Windows and I think you'd suggested a demonstration. I like that a lot. And if even if that was all we completed, that would that would be great. Are there any other things you'd like to like to put on today's session? Mm, yeah, I just wanted to know, like, uh, is there a fixed number of meetings that we have to have every week uh, during the coding phase also? Oh, good question. Yeah, and I don't think there is. So meeting plans during coding phase. Uh, so that's what we may want to do is um, bring that to bring that to the next meeting when we've got Justin there and uh, Rishab first meeting next week because I think they may be willing to say let's switch to once a week rather than doing twice a week if you think it will work for you or once a week plus the option if you say hey I have a question they're happy to meet separately so um, I believe in the past uh, or I think last year we did one meeting a week uh, and and it was it was sufficient particularly since this year your expected time is actually less per week than last year's was right the the assumption is you're roughly I think the assumption is you're putting roughly 20 hours a week into this and last year the assumption I think was 40 so one meeting a week may be more than enough. Hmm. Okay. So that's a good topic for next next meeting. Any other topics? Um, um, no, I don't have. No. All right. Then let's let's go ahead and have you share your screen and show a demo. Oh, hello, Rishab. Uh, hello, hi, Mark. Hi, Harshit. I was on mute. I'm sorry. So, Rishab was just asking a question that I propose to have answered Tuesday in next in the next meeting uh, about how many times a week to meet during the coding phase. Coding phase starts next Monday, and. Rishab, do I remember correctly that we only met once a week during coding phase? Uh, we used to meet uh, twice. Ah, okay. So, so open to open to, to both. Uh, it's something to negotiate yeah. with uh, the mentors. Yeah, and it's, it, it depends uh, on how it's compared as well. However, okay. Schedule like that. Sorry for being late. It's great that you're here with us. So Harshit is going to show us username, username, password credentials running on Windows. So it is visible to all that. Eh? We can see your browser. Okay. So I just have to make a few changes in there. So I mean, I for, so I first I was first using this command. So actually, this you created a separate directory under the pipeline job directory there. So due to which I have to use that. Mm -hmm. change. Right. Yeah, it was causing problems. So. So I think I should switch to this only. The git step provided in the pipeline. Maybe 
And are you using the same credential ID in the in the Git step as you are in the? Oh yes, you are. It's the same credential. Good, yeah. very good. Okay, so good confirmation that it works. So now I wasn't sure you you made two copies of that. What were the, what was the motivation for two copies? Oh, the git step. Uh, yeah. Well, when you bring it up in the editor again, we'll see it. Okay. So the delete dir on line seven clears out the workspace. Good. And then on line eight, you do a checkout using the git step of a branch named main without collecting change log information using that credentials ID. And then I assume that the URL is off on the end of that. Yeah. yeah. And then, then in the with credentials, you do a git push hmm. to delete the V3 tag. Ah, okay. Yeah, now, but now why the next, the, why the clone on, on line 16? Why the get step on line 16? Um, yeah, if I have to, I mean, fetch the change. I, like I'm pushing this, uh, pushing the tag, but I have to fetch the changes again. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure because, but it is causing error if I don't use this step. Okay, I, th I think, so what you're doing, the, 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 the thing you're doing in line 12, I think you're doing a git push origin, effectively minus minus delete a tag named mm, yeah. V3, is that right? Mm, so then what yeah. you're doing here in line 16 is saying, I need to retrieve that repository without the, the tag V3. Mm, yeah. Okay, so what you're doing is, that, that step you're doing in 16 at most is just doing a delete of a local tag. Mm, yes. Okay, and, and that's, that's a very optimistic thing because Git doesn't always promise to, to do deletion of local tags. Uh, so this, uh, okay, now I remember that this command is for deleting the tag from the server. There's right. another command for deleting the tag on the local server, but it won't delete in the remote server. So I am directly deleting the remote server, not in the local server. So using this, it, I am just fetching the changes. So it, it is automatically deleted in the local server as well. Right. And, and my, what I was, what I was warning is that I'm not, I think, think in that case, you may actually depending, be depending on a, a behavior that command line Git has changed over its lifetime that if I remember right, there is actually code inside the Git plugin or the Git client plugin that does some very explicit deletion of remote tags uh, because command line Git has changed its behavior over its life's lifetime for that. It, but this is great. What you're doing is good. Okay, so you, you clone the remote repository, delete the V3 tag from the remote, clone it again so that the, the deletion is now recorded locally. And then you're going to tag, push the tag, and you're going to push the branch named main as well. Is that correct on line 20? Mm, yeah. Okay.
this will not work for now. Uh, was there a missing bracket error uh, there? Mm, yes. Uh, I guess mm. so. I have just corrected it. Ah, okay, but we can we can actually adjust that as well. So this is trying to apply the tag locally. So let's let's adjust inside your inside your pipeline and let's let's do the tag deletion locally. So after line 12, you could just insert another, yeah, another bat command. And I think it's git, ta git tag minus minus delete v3, right? Now, I don't know if that will cause a problem if the tag does not exist. No, it will we... actually exist on the local repository. Ah, okay. Let's see. Okay, and there is a way to there is a way to ignore the return value from the bat command, I think. Just a minute, let me look to be sure. Pipeline nodes and processes bat. Yeah, so you can add an additional statement. It is return status is so the, it is a bat command yeah the bat <clears throat> command takes in so if you put it in if you put parentheses around the the argument well actually maybe wait a sec maybe there's a better way to do it there's there's probably a better a simpler way to do it just a minute um so cause a batch oh file to always yeah. succeed. No, I'm not finding it. There's a, how to make, how can I make my bat file continue after an error? There it is, yes. Okay, so, so if after your git tag command, the git tag minus minus delete. Yeah, on 13th. Right, on line 13, if on the end of that line, inside the single quote, you put an ampersand space okay. and then something that succeeds like echo tag deleted hmm. because what that does is that says the first command that you issued its return value will be ignored and the second command's result will be used oh 
No, uh, actually, it worked. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what um, we should? Yeah, actually, it worked. I commented the delete tag from the local repository and started the build again. Now it's okay. working. Okay. Great. I can show on the. Um, yeah, full tags. Oh, two minutes ago. There it is. Congratulations. And I can build it again if that's fine. This is also working. Excellent. That's great, Harshit. Yeah, 23 seconds. Oh. I mean, I have tested on the bat comma batch files. I have to, like, in the project proposal, we were well, there was a discussion about the PowerShell steps as well. So I have to test it on that. And right. First I have to install the plugin for that PowerShell support. Oh, no. PowerShell should already be included in the same plugin that gives you the bat step. Hmm. At least as far as I know it is. I think if you if you just replaced one of your PowerShell commands in the demo you just did with a bat, or bat command with a PowerShell command, it should just work. Oh, the, for what, what is the command for that? Power, P-O-W-E-R, S-H-E-L-L. -L. Oh, Let's good. try it just to see. Yeah. And I think that modern Windows versions now do all have PowerShell installed. So, and you're running Windows 10, is that correct? Mm, yes. Okay, well, we'll see. Okay, it's got some message. Hey, the logic might work. Would it work in the PowerShell as well? The bash logic of percent Oh, oh, right. The ampersand. Yeah, probably not. You're that's that good point. Yeah. It did. It did some things. Yeah, I think it deleted the tag. Okay. But, um, success. Yeah, I think PowerShell may be hiding failures from us. No, it does not. No, three was three not two. Okay. Mm. I think I can just comment it. Oh. Uh, it shows success, but there is. It was the tag was there three minutes ago. Right. So it's it's not it's not doing its job. 
even if it's reporting success. Try catch throw. It's like it it's missing a closing double yeah. quote. Huh. What there is some syntax problem in in the script for power well so open up the open up the um open up the the pipeline editor again let's take a look at it maybe we we're just missing a closing double quote ah yes look at that i don't know why it ever worked line 20. you could either take out the double quote that's there or put a second double quote in Either is fine. Oh. Yes. <laughs> but it worked for the bat. Yeah, interesting. Bat was more forgiving. <laughs> yes. Masking supported pattern matches of git underscore username, git password. Okay, tag already exists. So now we need to delete the tag command. I should remove this. That I think so. Possible. Yeah, because the tag should exist. Says tag v3 not found. Okay, so why what happened there? All right, so when is it saying that at, at which line? After deleting the tag from, then it changes an error. V3 not found. Okay, so it says, so I can't tell if that's the push that's trying oh, to the, push the tag the deleted, that doesn't. It has deleted the, okay, so it, it has, has been deleted, deleted from the remote. That's good. Okay, yes. so we know a part of the script is working. Yeah. I think it is a problem with the script. Well, and there's there's work to be done to be sure it works on PowerShell, and you know that. So mm -hmm. that's that's yeah. good work to do. Mm, yeah. All right, congratulations, Harshit. That's that's great progress. Thanks, Mark. So I, I have a question, um, Harshit and Mark. But, uh, so the process here is that uh, uh, Harshit is testing uh, the binding, username, password bindings for the 
in multiple platforms uh, with multiple executors and then this um, the steps to be sure that this is working the first is the interactive testing we're doing right now and um, after that uh, we're going to look at automated tests or we're going to look at um, adding this to get client plugin and then look look at those things how are we sure that this is going to work and we're not missing edge cases By is it automated test cases okay i i, I just wanted to know that since this is this is um, so we we of course um, have interactive testing to it's kind of a sanity check i assume that okay this is working and uh, the binding works for the commands but oh, so you're saying that you're going to cover going to write automated test cases for uh, the binding then in the gitlab project mm, yes so so at least for me that was quite challenging the writing automated tests for authentication cases usually means sharing a credential um that publicly and and that for me never worked i just wasn't willing to share a credential publicly so there there are some tests either in the git plugin or the git client plugin that use a technique of relying on the existence of a file on the local disk to provide those credentials and if the file doesn't exist the test is skipped so and you could consider doing something like that harshit uh there are also tests in the git plugin that use a uh, pipeline and they actually express pipeline in the test and and that again could be a a good place to put that kind of a a, a test where you say if this special file exists on the disk and it contains a username password pair then use that username password pair to create a jenkins credential and use that credential to run this this test mm. but but for me that's that's relatively well that's relatively exotic it would be really great if you could figure out how to do that but i would think at least for me i'm more concerned with getting you through username password and getting it released that i am worrying about if you get detailed test automation for the authentication cases now rishab you may have a different opinion there a different view i just think of i what i was assuming is going to be quite difficult to write authentication test cases i i don't have a different opinion i think <laughs> if it works for you then it's good <laughs> that's that's uh, i i was just saying automated test cases because um i just thought that um interactive testing i think is a great thing to do and it's the best thing to do right now is just that sometimes you tend to miss some cases and then uh, we get bugs but i i understand uh, the case here and writing automated test cases is going to take a lot of considerable time of our shifts right. and we all already right. have already have a lot of other work as well and that seems challenging as well when it comes to ssh finding so um, yeah see for me i was thinking if we accept that username password we want to get it implemented and released as quickly as possible so that harshit has been through the experience of going all the way to shipping code and we yeah. do that just as quickly as as he can after he's done his all the interactive testing it's been code reviewed etc after after all the usual steps but and if if automation can be written for it it should be right tested as much as you mm -hmm. can with unit tests but end to end unit tests for this one seemed like it was going to be binding plug in of how they're doing it i i'm not sure they may have mocks or something that they're using credentials binding plug right because it's got this problem in spades right it it has this problem everywhere it everything it does is binding a credential and how does how did Jesse write tests for that thing and and the answer is i don't know how he did it so but it be it certainly wouldn't be harmful to look at what he did and see how he did it so i should maybe that could be a good exercise for you to do exercise for you to look at those tests and if you can uh, you know you can see and then estimate 
how much of an effort that looks like to you. If it, if it looks like something we could easily port to get client again in this uh, environment. It's, it's okay. I, I don't, I don't, it's not like yeah, I, it is a necessary step because of course what Marcus said uh, makes total sense. Uh, so he, uh, releasing it, releasing the user um, password binding first um, with I would say sufficient interactive testing would be a great um, let's say progress and then you would have a lot of material for the phase one evaluations as well. So I think it will be a good a good systematic way to do it but yeah would look at the uh, the uh, cringe binding plugin first to estimate that effort mm, yeah i will report it on the gitter chat bottom That's right. thank you yeah thank you are there any other topics we should review today I, I actually explored uh, a little bit on the uh, top last uh, topic last time we were discussing that is uh, converting uh, open SSH private keys to uh, PEM files using Bouncy Castle. So uh, I have to show some code I tried. I haven't reached, I could not convert it into a PEM. Uh, um, I basically, Harshit, what we want is that we want a private key, right? We want to generate a private key from um, the whatever key we are trying to ingest. Essentially, what we want is we want a private key, Java private key from it, right? From the key store, we are able to generate a private key and then we um, pass it to whoever you want to. Um, yes. So I like, uh, can I share my screen and sh uh, show you what I tried? Absolutely. So, sorry, the code will be a little messy. So I have, uh, I created um, a private key with passphrase uh, and the public key as well. Stored them here for uh, ease of testing. Uh, so what I'm doing here, so Harshit, what I discovered, I'm not sure if you've seen this or not, uh, and it is strange, Bouncy Castle is providing uh, a spec for open SSH private key and a util to parse it. So they are recognizing that there is a new format uh, with open SSH users to um, encode their private key as well. So, um, so what I've essentially done is that I've, um, so they have a way of ingesting the file, which is to decode it, base64 decode it and replace um, the headers. And uh, so I was able to create the spec. Mm -hmm. The problem I'm facing is here generating the private key. Uh, it's a weird one. It's, um, it, it says that uh, it does not support the encoding type. Oh. Yeah. So okay. The, uh, yes, ma'am. What what form of open SSH private key was it? Was it an RSA, an ED twenty five fifty two five five one nine? So um, it's not an RSA definitely, but uh, because they, uh, if it was RSA, then it would have said it right. Uh, well. Head. At least mine, I had a case, I had at least one case where it didn't tell me it was RSA, but I knew it was. How, how can I confirm that? That uh, So I, I generated my key. I think there is an SS, let's see, what is it? Uh, let, me, let me do a quick look. Which crypto format? is my open SSH key in using. Okay. So uh, 
what i want to uh, so in their in their own um, code mm -hmm. what they telling us is that this is how you could use um, open ssh private key and so it, it tries to figure out the um, encoded algorithm as well i think in the code but ah. here it says that you 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 create the private spec this is the way they have created the key factory as well uh, they they use the bouncy as a provider and the algorithm is taken as rsa and okay. uh, yeah and they they get the, and they generate the private key from this so if we it's it's just a matter of uh, having the key factory once we have the instance of the key factory then it's it's all about generating the private key hmm so 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 uh, what i believe here is i'm not sure i'm still not 100% sure is that if they're providing the private key spec here that means there is a possibility of like they do uh, uh, they do agree that okay we can do it because i thought initially that bouncy castle does not support um for my, using uh, the open it doesn't support the existence the very existence of open ssh private keys the new format but this this leads to uh, i think we could do it i'm not sure uh, why it's it's not supporting the encoding i i did ask the same question in their mailing chat uh, in the bouncy castle mailing chat but i haven't received a reply yet mm. uh, or maybe the, the, uh, what you're saying mark is that maybe the algorithm is different so you're saying that i should uh, i can, can i we just uh, you know, hit and try that sure try ed25519 I don't know what format you used for your key, but it's worth trying. It may give us a different error message. I actually did not give any format. I just generated them using a file. I did not provide. I just assumed that I'm a user who will not provide the algorithm. Okay, so you you format. didn't use a minus T. So then it definitely is using RSA. The default is still RSA. Then this is a problem. So this is what it says: encrypted keys not supported. Encrypted key, huh? This is so maybe it only wants to read the public key, I, but it, but it's an open SSH private key spec. It seems like it has to be private key. That, that's what I. It does have a public key uh, spec as well, separately. So I, I did not try that. I was more focused on, uh, you know generating the private key first uh, yeah so uh, i also tried i i was thinking that okay this is a passphrase protected uh, private key let's say i don't have a passphrase protected private key I just have a uh, private key without it and and if i do that let's say if i change the private key to that without passphrase one still uh, will be it says a different error. Private key block has trailing data. Has oh, data. interesting. So so well, but but w private underscore without does it end with the same end open SSH private key sequence? Yes, it does not. This is the private key I have with the out the password. Huh. Private without. Sorry, let me just. So this one is the private key I created in the first phase and without the first phase. I, I do not see any difference in the way it is uh, generating right. the key. Yeah. So um, it just seems like they, they, they do they do recognize the existence of OpenSSH private key. And if, if that's the case, then there must be a way to, uh, I, I think there must be a way to. Get the keys as well using bouncy castle, but yeah, I, I really did not find anyone on the internet doing it, so that's weird. I did not find um, 
someone using the private key. I, I did find people using it to generate open SSH private keys. So I, I did find a case where a person was uh, generating open SSH private keys using uh, the key spare. So there is a, they have also provided a util to um, encode a private key or parse a private, private key. Log. So we, if you want to generate private key, you would use encode private key. And uh, this, this works fairly well. Would create uh, the same, and it does recognize the new algorithm we have. So this is what uh, uh, the um, the new format is using, right? Open such key v one is the new. Uh, I was reading about because I could not figure out what is this new format which Open SSH has adopted. And I was reading about it somewhere. Uh, let's open such key v one format. Uh, maybe uh, this is something for me. I don't want to waste Harshad's time. Um, I'll, I'll um, you know, spend some more time on this and try to figure out if this can actually work or not. If Harshad, you know anything about this, if you have seen this, then um, maybe you could share something. Um, when you were looking at bouncy castle, okay. okay. Uh, can you please? Uh... Uh, can you show that what uh, which class is this open SSH private yeah. spec? This is in the uh, JCE JCE um, spec package. Oh, so we had oh okay okay okay. So we are using the bouncy castle API provided by the Java directly, right? Okay, and should we not use that? I was using this. Um, oh, I'm just asking. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and your choice was, it's great if you found a bouncy castle implementation that does it. That's wonderful. It looks very promising. Mm, yes. But yeah, the problem I and they also have the test related to. I, I did see. I actually went to their code as well. Just. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm interested. The laptop was acting up and I could not. Um, I'm not sure if I was going to restore my sessions. Is it PC Java? So, what I was trying to look at is that if they've implemented this spec, they must have tested it as well, right? That some sure level. seems like it, yes. And and I was that is what I wanted to see if, if I could uh, GC, GC. Oh, hmm. Let me just directly search the class instead. And they're not testing it like this. I don't find this file directly, but Commit. I was in, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is the test which they uh, created for this. Yeah, and there is an RSA private key. Look at oh, except that's an RSA private key, not an open SSH private key. So that's one of the old format. Yes, which was weird to me because when it says open SSH private key spec, and I thought that this is specially for the new format. 
then for the RSA private key, we already have the key specs. I'm not sure why would it use the open SSH private key spec for it. We have a private key specification for RSA separately. So that is what confused me. So it's it's uh, using the encoding RSA, then it's using the DSA as well. I, I, and I, I think DSA is deprecated now by OpenSSH. It does not use a DSA to um, encrypt key. Right. As as far as I know, DSA is 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 long long deprecated. So in their own tests, I could not find, um, yeah, them using the latest format of the OpenSSH. But this is, I think, um, this was written long back. This, from it was 2018. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I need to look more into this. Also, issue find something about it then someone did report that this util is failing uh, there is a certain format we trying to yeah, generate private keys oh interesting okay but they say they say that they have fixed it to support Huh, to support ED25519. Yeah, right. This is not. It seems to be a different use case, but yeah. So this is the, the problem is that I, I don't see anyone using this spec. Um, the internet to actually do this, but yeah, um, and I, I think I, I did try ED uh, two five five one nine as well, and my key factory says it does not understand. This is the right uh, monitor, right? Uh, that's that's the right spelling. That's the spelling I recognize anyway. Yeah, but uh, it, it says that it does not. Oh, it is recognized. So you know, trying this, it says the I it, it did not recognize the algorithm. Or maybe I used the wrong monitor. I, I think I used the small D or something like that. Mm. I think I'm taking. Oh, so uh, I I look look at this more. I uh, just wanted to share it so that if um, Harshit. You know, you want to build on this, or maybe you know how to do this, how to use the spec uh, further uh, with the key factory. If, if not, if, if this seems like a dead end, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely try it. Then uh, we can go with your um, direct approach of converting it into a. So we were also thinking about converting it, uh, converting the OpenSSH uh, private key into a PEM file, right? Into a RSA encoding by using the uh, SSH key gen only. Mm, yes, uh, in PEM format, the algorithm will show itself like which encoding algorithm it uses. I mean, the private key will show itself which encoding algorithm it uses once it is converted into the PEM format. So essentially, you're, you're going to, uh, what we're thinking is that we will um, execute a shell or uh, whichever environment we will use a step, we will launch a command. And the command will be that we're going to convert, or or do we ex expect the user to give us that key only to, in that format? Do we specify that instead of no, generating? I, yeah. I'm, think, I'm thinking about the long command functionality that is provided by the Git client plugin, but I have not. Uh, which which was uh, yeah, which was SSS keygen hyphen f the the key and then hyphen m pem that mm. is what uh, i think mark mentioned right mm, yeah 
it is mentioned in the docs uh, in the Just notes it. meeting notes it is in the meeting notes Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure I'm following Rishab. I apologize for not being entirely up. It's it's been a, a, a sick day for me. Are there things that I need to be doing here? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I just took both of you to a rabbit hole. I was looking. Oh, that's. I think it's wonderful that you're looking at OpenSSH. Thank you very much. What a great thing to do. That's great. Thank you. And no, and it looks promising for me as well. It does. I mean, the, your exploration seems to support that there's at least some thought about OpenSSH private keys inside Bouncy Castle. So we may be able to do, do much more than we expected with it. And um, I, um, and with this um, thought, I just wanted to ask, what is the um, uh, uh, launch command with arguments and doing it programmatically? What are we uh, trading off here? Is it is it more execution time? It it Will is it? more it is much more expensive to create a sub process, uh, run something, and then come back than it is to do it native in Java. It's back to yeah. the the JGit the JGit case, and SSH keygen is probably even shorter lived than most Git commands. You remember how we found that. Yeah. JGit could clone much faster on small repositories because the overhead of starting and stopping the process was much less. It it's didn't much, exist. Yes. But if we need to do SSH keygen, we need to do SSH keygen. So there is a real benefit of, um, if we are able to find it, um, find Bouncy Castle or any library to do this, it, it has a worthwhile benefit for us. I believe so. Yes, I think it's a, a real benefit. And one real benefit is that it, it makes it much more maintainable and much less reliant on specific programs being installed on the target computer. Every time we, we need to run an external program, we, we hope that the user has that external program installed on that agent. Yeah, that's, that's correct. So, so I, I think this could be done in a way where Harshit's uh, progress is not blocked. I, I will look into it more. If Harshit, you feel like um, you, 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 know, you, uh, you investigate and you see something worthwhile, you can definitely share it with me or with Mark in the chat with everyone. But um, I think you should continue with whatever you're doing and the plan is. I, I can definitely look into it during the weekend. So should not be a problem. And before we conclude, we're, we're past our hour. Um, do we want to set a time and a day for our next meeting? Not so do we want to make it the ninth? So next next Wednesday, do you want to make it sooner than that? Sure. Yeah, which, which, I'm think we can have next Tuesday on 8th June. Okay. 06, 08. And again at 7.30 a.m. India Standard Time. That's one that I won't be able to attend because that's during my time of running the, the documentation office hours with contributors in India. So, but Justin and Rishab, you are both welcome to be there. That would be great with me. I, I think we can ready, <laughs> we should use you Marcus, <laughs> as long as you are here. So um, can we reschedule it to a time where you can also be available? So that you, you 
we could we could go one hour later on that day. Uh, but if I remember right, that collides with Harshit's school schedule, or we could do it one day later. Yeah. We can you <coughs> sorry, we can you go with the one hour later. I mean, oh, one hour later would work. Like, yeah. So my colleges are like starting the practical, so there's not much I have to do on that. So. Rishab, is that okay for you if we start one hour later, 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday? Uh, yes, Mark, should not be a problem. Okay, so that, uh, Mark, to schedule that time. And we'll, we'll plan, a, I'll, send, I'll send a meeting invitation. We'll see if, if Justin is able able to meet at that time. Great. Yeah, or we could keep it on um, our same, like if we were setting Wednesday as the time. And if that's well, what Justin uh, is comfortable with as well. Yeah, for me, Wednesday is difficult because that's the the day before my surgery. So oh, okay. I, I would rather not do it mm -hmm. on the ninth if we can avoid it so yeah. so for me it would be the eighth is is much better particularly if you're willing to do it one hour later yeah yeah for sure for sure Mark. yeah and all right i will i will send a meeting invitation to everyone proposing that time thanks everybody thank you, thank you so much thanks mark thanks Richard. bye